You know, lately I've been thinking about one specific thing that's kind of been bothering me for the last few... I want to say... At least the last couple of years. And that's something would be the... Hyperdimension Neptunia series. I just really kind of miss the Neptunia series, to be completely honest with you. Neptunia is a series I first got into in 2015, when I was basically getting bored of my current assortment of games. I was getting bored of only playing uh, Counter-Strike, TF2, and Osu all the time, 24-7. And I really wanted to spice things up, like, you know, like, switch things up a little bit. Because it was getting a little bit samey, it was getting a little bit... Just... It, it, it wasn't doing it for me anymore. And... While looking for anime backgrounds for my Steam profile at the time, as funny as this sounds, I... Stumbled across this... Compa background that I saw that was like, that looked like super good. The character looked super cute, and, and the background itself was like... 10 cents. Keep in mind, back in 2015, anime backgrounds, unlike today, used to cost a fucking truckload. So finding a very dirt cheap one back in 2015 on Steam was a very, very uncommon sight. And I bought it. I really, really liked the look of the background. And after a while, I took a liking to the design so much that I decided that I was gonna try to check this game where it's from out. Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1, and eventually, after selling some Counter-Strike items, uh, I bought Neptunia Rebirth 1 on Steam, and then I proceeded to play it, and play it, and play it, and play it, and boy oh fucking boy that I love Rebirth 1. It was such, such a fun game. There were a lot of knickknacks, a lot of like little technical hiccups that I really didn't mind at the time. I plugged in the PS3 controller, played the game, it was super fucking cool. It was a really good game. I legitimately enjoyed playing it, and this was back at the back in the day where the most recent Neptunia game on Steam was Rebirth 2. So after playing Rebirth 1, I loved it. I really did. I wanted to play more, seeing one at the end of the game. I, I obviously knew it like, hey, I want to try the second game. So then I bought... Then I bought Neptunia Rebirth 2. Well, I, I shouldn't say I bought it. Because I had a friend at the time who gifted me the game alongside every single bit of DLC for the game because he saw how much I liked uh, the game. Ruben, I think was his name. If you're watching this video by some crazy miracle chance, uh, thanks so much for the gift back in 2015. It was fucking awesome of you to do so. And Rebirth 2, I played it. I was l very confused as to, like, why it didn't follow up on Rebirth 1. And just essentially rebooted itself after one game. It was very confusing for me at the time. Because I didn't know the context behind the series. You know, you play the first game and you move on to the second game... And suddenly, the, the, the fucking story is completely different, and I was just like, what the hell? Plus, I beat Rebirth 2, my first go-around in about 10 hours, I got the normal ending, and the story was just kind of like, not it, you know? But I still, I would say, it came out at a net positive with Rebirth 2. It was a very, it was a fun game, it was a good game. I just think that the story, at, at, when I first played it, was very undercooked and very underwhelmingly short. This was before I knew that the game had nine fucking endings to uh, do. But I was interested, I was hooked at that point. Like, Neptunia legitimately interested me, and... Looking forward to the release of Rebirth 3, I... What I did instead was I actually went backwards a generation, I guess you could say, into the PS3 era of Neptunia games. I down... not downloaded, I... What I used to do back in 2015 and 2016 was I used to frequent gaming cafes around my area because gaming cafes, on top of being, you know, gaming cafes, were also a place where you could buy video games. And I saw Neptunia Mark II on the PS3 in the clearance bin for 10 bucks. And I was like, you know, 
I want to I want to get that because I I knew at the time that Rebirth Two was a remake of Neptunia Mark II. Like I, 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 when I bought it, I already knew that like hey. Rebirth 1 is a remake of the original 2010 game, Rebirth 2 is a remake of Mark 2, and Rebirth 3, which at the time wasn't released, was going to be a remake of Victory. And I saw Mark 2 at a discount price, the clearance aisle, obviously, for 10 bucks, and I was like, yeah, sure. I want to see what the original game was, what the original game was like. I bought it, I went home that day, I put it into my PS3, and I once again fell in love with the series. Mark II, don't get me wrong, is utterly fucking jank. It was really rough around the edges, but I loved it. I actually still, to this day, hold the opinion that Mark II is a better game than Rebirth II. I honestly still think that. And honest, and actually, that applies to every single PS3 game. I think the PS3 originals have more merit to them than the Rebirth games. And this might be an unpopular opinion, sure. I'm willing to... Uh, but I'm willing to die on that hill that the Rebirth games are inferior to their originals, especially after Rebirth 3 launched, and I played it way after I played um, Victory. Speaking of Victory, it's a very hot take to say, but Victory is my favorite Niptune game in the series. I, when I got Victory on the PS3 for 60 bucks, but I treated that as a birthday present for myself, because I had birthday money, it was, I think I just turned 17. Yeah, 2016, I just turned 17. I had birthday money to spare, so I bought Neptunia Victory from the very same gaming cafe for 60 bucks, and my fucking god, you, you can see in my PS3 save files over here how much bloody time I've put into victory. Each of these save files are fresh, like mostly mostly fresh playthroughs of each game. I think the only ending in victory I didn't manage to get out of the four available ones was the bad ending. And I truthfully loved victory despite the 40 minute long cutscenes that you could just have to sit through and just just kind of sit there and do nothing. Yeah, that is a that is a fair criticism for Victory. I won't knock anyone for not liking the game for its cutscenes, but that's the whole reason that I do love it is because they go into so much detail on the story. Because in Victory, Neptune starts from absolute zero because game industry starts from absolute zero. And and then I got a PS4 and a better PC, and I played Victory 2, and oh my god, Victory 2 was such a great game. After Victory 2, I was very optimistic as to, like, what I have to look forward to with the Neptunia series going, you know, going into the future. And initially, things were looking bright. The PS Vita spinoffs were getting PC ports and Steam releases, and I bought every single one! Every single PS Vita port that came to Steam... I bought them, and I've had some genuine fun with some of them. Action Unleashed was a game that ran on my, at the time, Pentium laptop. I even have a video of it running on my Pentium T4200 laptop that I had at the time. It was a really, really shit laptop, trust me. I couldn't even play TF2 on it without, like, heavily modifying the game and putting it on the absolute lowest resolution that it can go, but... Somehow, Neptunia Action Unleashed ran on that fucking thing, and I played the hell out of it almost. It was... the game was alright. I didn't like some of the mission structures, I enjoyed some bits, it didn't like some, didn't like other bits, but overall the game was pretty good. And after I got my new PC, I also gave a Mega Tag mention, Blonde, Blonde plus Neptune versus Zombies I shot, and that was a decent romp. And finally, then I played Super Dimension Neptunia vs. Sega Hard, Go Hard Girls, I think it was called. And that game is, bar none, the best spin-off game that the Neptunia series, I think, to, the to date, has had. I do not want to talk about Hyper Devotion Noir. You can read my Steam review for it, I'll have a link for it in the description. But I fucking hate Hyper Devotion Noir. I put 10 hours into it, and that's 10 hours too many. That was the worst game I've ever played. But then after 
Super Dimension came out on Steam. Neptunia kind of went into a really, really strange timeline where... Remember how I mentioned Neptunia V2? Or Victory 2? It's not Neptunia 7. Yeah, well, that game, for some bizarre reason, received a remake. And it's not in the form of Rebirth 4, as would be logical. Rebirth 1, 2, 3, and then 4, right? No! They fucking did a VR remake. Or pseudo-VR, if you want to be, like, you know, if you want to be that guy, but... For some reason, V2... Needed a remake according to Idea Factory or Compile Heart? I don't know who's calling the shots, but... For whatever reason, they remade V2 into V2R, and oh my god, the experience there is so much worse. The new battle system they toyed around with sucks. The VR elements are honestly just bafflingly confusing as to why development time was spent on this, instead of a new mainline entry about VR, but I digress. V2R was a game I saw gameplay of, I read reviews, I literally analyzed the shit out of it, and then I decided, yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick to V2 instead of V2R. Because I even hear that the PC port of V2R is abhorrently lazy compared to V2. And then after that, Neptunia kind of fell off, I guess you could say. There were no real news to look forward to. Japan, for some reason, got an enhanced re-release of Rebirth 1, a re-release of a remake of the first game on the PS4 when Rebirth 1 was already available on PC. Maybe there was some demand for it on a console market or something, but I don't know. It was such a confusing release, but what makes it even more confusing is that they then went back to Rebirth 1 to backport some features from Rebirth 1 Plus, and sell them back to players as DLC for Rebirth 1? Like, what the fuck is this? And then they later on added characters from V2 into all of the Rebirth games, and the, 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 the ports of those characters... I'm specifically going off of Uzume, because I love Uzume. She's still my favorite Neptunia character, and I'm going to die on this fucking hill. She was ported to each Rebirth game. I bought her for Rebirth 1, and holy shit, she's so poorly programmed in Rebirth 1, it's not even funny. It really isn't. And I re read reviews for the other DLCs for Rebirth 2 and 3, and th the exact same issues exist as Rebirth 1. And it was just confusing as to, like, why they even did this. Why not just update Rebirth 1 and give each play like, give all the owners... You know, a, a, an incentive to go back without charging fucking money for it, but whatever. What's done is done. They're not going to go back and make all the DLC free just because I'm complaining about it. And then, 2020 was a big year, or at least was supposed to be a big year for Neptunia. I'm skimming over a lot of stuff. I know that there was Cyber Dimension, Neptunia, Four Goddesses Online. I played that on PS4. I thought it was a pretty fun game, technical issues aside. I enjoyed it. But it's not really anything remarkable. I'd still probably play. I'd still probably play it back nowadays, though, because you know it was, it was a fun time. I think it was. I think it flowed way better than Super, uh, than uh, Action Unleashed and Mega Tag Bench, and it's probably the best hack and slash Neptunia to date. I haven't played the Sandra and Kagura collab, but we'll get into that later. Um, and then 2020 was supposed to be a big year, and. Because it was Neptunia's 10th anniversary. And uh, in, in, Jap in Japanese game studios, there's a like, trend where like anniversaries are big events, where like something huge is planned for a series that's turning like, you know, 10 years old. Neptunia, as of 2022, as of recording this, is 12 years old. And 2020 was supposed to be a big year for it, and they even teased it several times that it's going to be a big year with a, a secret project is going to be revealed at the 10th anniversary of the Neptunia series, and they legitimately got me excited for it. And a lot of Neptunia fans as well over on Reddit, people were excited for what this 10th anniversary project could be. And you know what the 10th anniversary project ended up being? It ended up being a fucking remake of Rebirth 1 Plus 
for the PS5. A remake of a remaster of a remake of the first game as their big secret 20th, uh, 10th anniversary project. That's their big 10 year celebration from a Neptunia series. And I don't want to get into the details of like how just Neptunia has been spin off over spin off over spin off over spin off. I lost count how many fucking spin offs this goddamn series has been doing. Some of them were pretty good attempts. Super Neptunia RPG, a game I personally didn't enjoy much. I really didn't. I tried to give it a shot. I played it for six hours. It just wasn't it. It really wasn't. I dropped it. I put it down. I'm not playing it ever again. But I, I don't have to go on. After V2, it just looks like they stopped giving a shit about Neptunia. What Neptunia in the past used to be a series that parodied the game industry. You know, Noir, she's a parody of Sony and the PlayStation. Blonde, she's a parody of Nintendo and the Wii, or... Yeah, the Wii. Vert, she's a parody of Microsoft and Xbox. Neptune's a parody of Sega, which... It was a bit of a stretch, I'll admit, but alright, you, you go off. And... That's what made it so endearing, is that Neptunia just trivialized all of the happenings from the gaming industry. That's why the region is called Game Industry, for fuck's sake. It just trivialized them and turned them into fun little stories and with stakes, and it was, it was just... It, the writing wasn't superb, but it was fun. Playing the games was fun. Going through the stories was fun. But after V2, where did all of that go? Because it feels like Neptunia now has become a parody of itself. It's not even a parody of anything, it's just soulless. It genuinely is soulless nowadays. I don't look forward to any Neptunia releases nowadays anymore. I still try to more or less keep in touch with things, but... Neptunia just isn't the same anymore, man. I legitimately miss the excitement of a new Neptunia release, a new big project to look forward to. Neptunia V2 was over half a decade ago. That was the last mainline JRPG entry that we've had in over half a decade. And it doesn't look likely that there's going to be anything new soon. Sure, Japan has had a release of a new spin-off game, for fuck's sake, called Neptunia Sisters vs. Sisters, which, at first glance, looked like it was going to be a spin-off in the main Neptunia Timeline. That's another thing I don't fucking get about Neptunia is how they go from dimension to dimension to dimension to dimension. They established this in victory. It was used sparsely in victory, mind you. But then afterwards, they just use that plot device as a fucking scapegoat for literally every goddamn spinoff. And I fucking hate it. Knock it off with the whole dimensions hopping thing. Like, it's annoying at this point. It really is. Victory did it well. Victory 2 did it super well if you've ever played Victory 2. That one... Th the way they handled dimension hopping in Victory 2 is fucking incredible. But after Victory 2, they just used that excuse as a scapegoat for this and that and this and that, and it's just fucking annoying. Knock it off. And I legitimately just missed the Neptunia series. That's all there is to it. Neptunia was a series I used to look forward to every single year, or a couple months to see, read news of, see what the community's discussing, but now more than ever, the Neptunia community just seems... dead. The developers have resorted to using Neptunia as a cash cow, because they saw how well Neptunia started to perform after they did the Rebirth series and like released everything on PC. 
They saw how much money they were raking in. And instead of becoming a, this fun series about parroting the gaming industry, it just became their money printing machine. And I truthfully mean it when I say that I fucking hate this. I hate the state of the Neptunia series in 2022. And, I, and every year, I keep huffing on fucking copium, hoping that this will be the year where Neptunia gets back on its feet. This will be the year. This will be the year. It's never the year. Neptunia is gone. It, tr it truly is. Neptunia... I don't have any hopes for the future of this, of this franchise anymore. I'm just sick of the way Compile Heart has been treating this IP that is just so beloved by so many diehard fans. If I didn't love the series, I wouldn't be ranting about the state of things as they are right now. Yes, I know, some of the spin-off games are pretty good. Others, however, like Neptunia Virtual Stars, you can't fucking convince me that that game was literally just made to bank on the VTuber trend. That's all that game is. It's just a fucking fad. It's just a cash in on like the whole VTuber thing. That's it. There's no merit to Virtual Stars. It's just to cash in on what's popular. And that's what Neptunia has been doing these past few years, and I fucking hate it. Compile Heart or Idea Factory, I don't care who watches this video. If any of you, Matt, if any of you are listening, if any of you see this video, we miss the Neptunia series. We really, really, really miss the Neptunia series. And we want it to co go back to form. We want to know what happens after V2. Even though the ending of the game seems pretty final, if you get the true ending, I will admit, but you've encountered this exact same dilemma with Mark II slash Rebirth II. Yet, Victory still managed to bring something new to the table. And continued that trend afterwards. So then... What happened? I, 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 like, why can't there be a Neptunia game about the PS4 slash, slash Xbox One game uh, landscape that, that, that we just got out of? Why can't there be a game about how the Switch is doing? Why can't there be a game about the current console generation, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X? A story about how scalpers are ruining the shares of all of the nations, and we have to do something to figure out. Why can't you do something like that? Just why? Pretty please, snap out of it. We missed the Neptunia series. We wanted to come back. And the reason I'm complaining about this is because I love the Neptunia series. I truthfully mean it. I love this series, I miss it, and I genuinely hate how it's been mistreated for the last several years. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks for watching.